Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. I hope you guys had a really nice weekend. I know mine was very enjoyable as we had both the US Open and the start of the Olympic trials. I think it's going to be a very exciting year for the Americans on the track. So if you're not tuned in yet, I suggest that you start. And if any of you guys watched either of those events this weekend, let me know below. But getting into it, I shared this diagram on Twitter over the weekend that I thought was very helpful. So go ahead and take a screenshot if you would like, but it just shows the flows of Tesla's revenue and expenses and then profits in green for quarter one 2021 in a very digestible fashion. And I really think this chart is very valuable in terms of understanding the flows of money and how the accounting process works in a visual way. So once again, highly recommend screenshot and taking a few minutes to read through it just so you can start to conceptualize how all of this stuff works. Tasmanian reported that it seems as though the Model Y paint shop at Giga Berlin is up and running at least to some degree. This is definitely something I'm excited to see some of the cars, the actual production cars coming off the line to see the paint. Tesla's caught a lot of flack over the years for having paint that hasn't been the best. It's been soft and prone to chip, which is why so many people get some sort of paint protection coating put on their Teslas after purchase. And the royal blue colors that you see in the Tesla imaging online is definitely not the same blue that you see on Teslas on the street. So I'm definitely optimistic that this new paint shop could bring the colors to life a little bit more, make the paint a little bit more durable to rock chips and things of that nature. So we'll see. Now, no, this does not mean production is starting now. These are just test vehicles, testing the machines and the equipment. I still wouldn't expect any actual production vehicles until November or December of this year. And this next news bit is actually really exciting because this is the blueprint or the model for Tesla solar and Tesla's energy division to really start gaining more mainstream mass market adoption. As you can see, a new build apartment complex in Schofield in greater Western Sydney will offer its tenants cheap solar power via a rooftop photovoltaic system and 24 Tesla Powerwall battery systems or 324 kilowatt hours of storage. This is thought to be the largest Powerwall installation in a residential building in Australia. The Powerwalls will discharge at peak usage times to reduce the amount of energy being drawn from the electricity grid. The battery's combined total of 324 kilowatt hours of storage capacity is sufficient to meet the entire power load of the bottle brush complex at average usage for over five hours. And this system is expected to meet about 45% of the site's overall power load with electricity generated and stored on site. So this is a huge opportunity for all new builds of apartments and condos and multifamily dwellings, etc., for them to start integrating solar and power walls and energy storage for their customers. Hopefully it's getting to the point where the economics of this decision makes sense for the owners of the complex and of course for the residents. So if this blueprint and this model starts to pay off financially in a few years ROI instead of multi-decades, then we're definitely going to start seeing this more and more. But the talk of the town today is of course and understandably so all about Andre Carpathy and his presentation at the Autonomous Drive conference over the weekend so I'll play a few quick clips for you but honestly guys I can't encourage you to actually go watch the full episode enough it is linked below so after this video go ahead and check it out but here's why this is so important it's not even anything that he said although he did drop some pretty incredible statistics about Tesla and their supercomputer and what they're doing which by the way is apparently the fifth most powerful in the world for an auto company but you know how you see online all the time people saying that Tesla autopilot and full self-driving is a scam it should only cost a thousand dollars Paying $10,000 for, you know, features that aren't fully functional is crazy, it's a ripoff, yada yada, that whole spiel. This type of video really confirms the fact that that $10,000, that, sure, maybe right now, today, for the features you get, sure, maybe it's not worth $10,000, but what everybody fails to remember is that you're paying early for a feature that is going to be coming, whether it's this year, 2022 or 2025, that $10,000 investment when, not if, but when they solve for full autonomy is going to be worth way more. And you have to remember, Tesla has been spending millions of dollars on 
the computers, the technology, the software, the employees, the training. I mean, they are all in on AI. By the way, Tesla AI day coming hopefully in the next few months. But what I'm getting at here is if you go and watch this 30 minute presentation, you will start to understand why Tesla is charging $10,000 for its full self-driving suite. And if you can really sit there and watch this video and then come to me and tell me that, you know what, Dylan, Tesla should be valued like a traditional automaker, then honestly, Honestly, I don't know what to tell you because what Tesla is doing with their supercomputer, with their custom chips, with their neural nets and hiring the very best talent on the planet, they are absolutely a full-blown AI company along with many other mini startups under the Tesla umbrella. So anyways, let's get into this. Andre Karpathy, the director of AI at Tesla. And so it's actually quite unscalable to, uh, to actually collect, build and maintain these high definition LiDAR maps. Um, it would be incredibly expensive to keep this infrastructure up to date. And so we take the vision-based approach, which of course is much more difficult because you actually have to get, to ne get neural networks that uh, function incredibly well based on the videos. Uh, but once you actually get that to work, it's a general vision system and can in principle be, be deployed anywhere on earth. Uh, so that's really the, the problem that we are solving. Now, in terms of the cartoon diagram of a typical sensing suite of an autonomous vehicle, uh, these are kind of like the typical sensors you would see. And as I mentioned, we do not use high definition maps and we do not use LIDAR. We only use uh, video cameras. And in fact, um, the um, vision system that we have been building over the last few years has been getting uh, so incredibly good that it's kind of leaving a lot of the other sensors in the dust. And so actually um, the cameras are doing most of the heavy lifting uh, in terms of the perception that you've seen in the car. And actually it's gotten to the point that we are able to start removing some of the other sensors because they are uh, just becoming these crushes that you start to not really need at all. So actually three weeks ago, we started to ship cars that have no radar at all. So we've deleted the radar and uh, we are driving on vision alone in these cars. And the reason we are doing this, I think is well expressed by Elon in this tweet. He's saying, uh, when radar and vision disagree, which one do you believe? Uh, vision has much more precision. So better to double down on vision than do sensor fusion. And what he's referring to is basically like vision is getting to the point where the sensor is like a hundred X better than say radar. Then if you have a sensor that is dominating the other sensor and, and is so much better then the other sensor is actually starting to like really contribute, it's actually holding you back. And it's really starting to contribute noise uh, to the former system. And so we are really doubling down uh, on the vision only approach. And um, actually in this talk, what I would like to primarily talk about is how we have achieved vision only control without radar and how we have released this quite successfully so far to the fleet and what it has sort of um, taken for us to for us to do that and so having seen all this we've actually released this we've accumulated about 15 million miles so far um, and 1.7 million of those have been on autopilot and so far there have been no crashes now of course we're running at a uh, massive scale here and so we do expect some crashes at some point uh, the legacy stack uh, has a crash roughly every 5 million miles or so i believe and so we do expect some uh, some incidents uh, at um, at some point, uh, but this, uh, the improvements for the vision stack are not sort of stopping. So I think we're very confident that uh, we're barking up the right tree here and that uh, we can actually get this to work really incredibly well. So the gist of this presentation was Tesla vision, Tesla removing radar, why and how they did it. The big problem that they had to solve was essentially determining depth of objects and the speed at which they are moving without radar. And Tesla did this with a process known as auto labeling and to do so to have really good AI, you need LCD, a large, clean, diverse data set, which Tesla has all three. And remember this in-house supercomputer that you're seeing, it is not Dojo. So Tesla Dojo is an entirely different thing than we're talking about today. So the main takeaway here is that Tesla is very confident that their vision only system is absolutely enough to solve for full self-driving in a very effective fashion. By the way, that is also scalable. That doesn't need radar, it doesn't need LiDAR, it doesn't need certain sensors. All components that other competitors in the full self-driving race are using to some degree and spending money on Tesla not so and as Andre said in the presentation doing this in a vision only fashion is really hard to do Tesla has spent months if not years perfecting this and working on it so all of those people online that are complaining oh Tesla delays the whole two-week joke and it's not worth the money well sure in the short term I understand those frustrations but guys you have to see the bigger picture and if you were able to peek behind the curtain kind of like this presentation gives you and see what they're really doing what they're really spending the hours they're really putting into working and solving this problem 
you would then be able to understand, okay, that $10,000 investment will give me some features now, but it's really for something that's coming in the future. And Tesla is very confident it will be coming. We just don't know exactly when. But with each passing week, it feels like they are getting closer and closer. So like I've said for months now, once this flip switches and they have it mostly solved with drivers really not having many interventions going, you know, from home to work and taking trips, Things are going to drastically change for Tesla stock price, for Tesla in general, for the field of AI and autonomy and driving. And it really does feel like that switch is going to go off sometime in the next few years. Now, yes, some other people might think that it's coming much sooner, but I like to keep my expectations low. But that's all for today. Remember, go watch this full episode. Please take a second to like the video if you did. I hope you guys have an excellent day and a big thank you to everybody on the next screen.